In this video, I'm going over my top seven stocks for the month of May, 2022. So over the last month, I've researched hundreds of different companies and this is my list of stocks I think should be on your watch list. I encourage you to watch until the end to get my full analysis on each of these companies. I'll go over key numbers, recent news, and why I expect them to grow. Let's get started. So the first stock we were talking about today is Twitter stock ticker TWTR. Twitter is an American social media service that all you guys have probably heard of, especially recently. Right now, one share of Twitter is trading at $49.02 with a 52-week low of $31.30 and a 52-week high of $73.34. Looking at their one-year price chart, you can see that one year ago, they were trading at above $70 a share, saw a huge drop at the end of April 2021, it hit a low in the high 30s, and now it's back up a little bit. They have a current market cap of $37.431 billion and a negative 28 cents earnings per share. Their current price to sales ratio is 7.69 and their price to book ratio is 5.11. Like we saw, earlier they have a negative profit margin with a current profit margin of negative 4.36 percent and they also have a negative return on equity of negative 2.9 percent this is on revenues in the last 12 months of 5.08 billion dollars they're carrying total cash of about 6.39 billion dollars and they have a current ratio of 5.89 which is very high on a scale of one to five, one being a strong buy and five being a sell, analysts are rating Twitter as a 2.9, meaning it is a hold. And the average analyst price target is currently $51, which is about 4% higher than the current price of $49.02. So the biggest thing in the news with Twitter is that Elon Musk is currently working out a deal to buy the globally used social media platform for $44 billion. And Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey is endorsing this deal, saying that Elon is the singular solution I trust. While there's no guarantee that this deal will be finalized, and the fact that it could take a long time for this deal to actually go through, there's still plenty of both hype and speculation with lots of momentum driving the stock's value and interest. More specifically, if the move is fully executed, Twitter will become private, meaning that it will no longer be on the New York Stock Exchange. This could maybe explain the bearish movement in price that Twitter has been experiencing for the past few days, since shareholders are probably not too thrilled about one of the biggest companies in the world going private. But it could also be argued that Elon's purchase makes a very bullish case for for the stock. Musk proposed buying Twitter for $54.20 per share for a total buyout value of $44 billion. The thing is, right now, Twitter is selling for less than $50 per share, and this number can certainly change very quickly due to all the hype and the news. Recently, Twitter released its earnings report for Q1 of 2022, and we can see that much of the metrics actually underperformed when compared to analyst estimates. For example, Twitter reported a revenue of $1.2 billion when analysts estimated a revenue of $1.3 billion. However, Twitter still experience plenty of year-over-year -year increases, so it's not like the company is straight up losing money. It's just not performing as well as analysts would hope. Ultimately, I'd say that this buyout could lead to a strong short-term momentum play as investors try to buy in and make profits before the company's value breaks even with Musk's offered price. I'll definitely be keeping an eye out on Twitter for the next few days or month, but yeah, this is a pretty risky play. I want to talk about Twitter because, you know, they're in the news right now and there is a lot of movements with this stock. But yeah, maybe for long-term investors, is not the best buy out there. So the next stock we are talking about today is Microsoft stock ticker MSFT. Microsoft is an American tech company known for its production of computers and software. So one share of the company is currently trading at $277.52 with a 52-week low of $238.07 and a 52-week high of $349.67. Looking at the one-year price chart, we saw some really big gains for the last year, all the way up until November slash December, which is normal because as of right now, tech is definitely hurting. They have a market cap of $2.076 trillion, a PE ratio of 29.56, earnings per share of $9.39, and they pay a small dividend of 0.86% at the current valuation. They have a five-year expected peg ratio of 1.85 and a price to book ratio of 12.66. They have a great profit margin at 38.5% and a return on equity of 49.05%, which is also very strong. This is all in revenues of $184.9 billion in the last 12 months. And looking at their balance sheet, we see total cash of $125.35 billion and a current ratio of 2.25. Analysts love Microsoft and they are rating it as a 1.7, meaning it is a buy. And the average analyst price target is $364.65, which is about 25% higher than the current price of $277.52. 
So Microsoft just announced earnings on April 26th, where it had plenty of bullish financial news to share. To start off, the tech giant generated a revenue of $49.4 billion, a year-over-year -year increase of 18%. And the company's operating income was $20.4 billion, a year-to-year -year increase of 19%. This performance was definitely well-received by the market. Now, this definitely contrasts the activity of Microsoft and other major stocks in the market for the past month. In fact, the value of the stock market as a whole has been going down due to fears of an economic slowdown. More specifically, consumers and investors are fearing of the Fed raising interest rates. And as a result, the price of Microsoft as well as other big tech stocks have all participated in this bearish run. So what's probably happening now is that big tech could be pretty undervalued for some specific companies. And I believe that fears of an economic slowdown don't change the fact that Microsoft, one of the largest and most durable companies in the world, is generating surprisingly massive profits based on its most earnings report. Yeah, I I just personally feel that Microsoft is such a solid long-term pick along with companies like Apple and the fact that its price is being driven down due to investor fears and concerns more than anything else could suggest that there is far more room for the company's value to grow. This potential growth also implies that there could be money made by investors who are willing to stick it out in the long run with Microsoft. Yeah, overall, I'm always dollar cost averaging Microsoft stock and it's definitely one that I think you guys should keep on your watch list. Want to know my secret for building wealth? It's actually not by picking individual stocks. Rather, it's investing in the right index funds. And I use Wealthfront for my long-term investments that are all hand-selected by their investment research team. They won RoboAdvisor of the Year by both Investopedia and NerdWallet, and everyone I know loves them. They're a super affordable alternative to a traditional financial advisor who normally might charge you 1% or more of your net assets each year. That extra money you'd be paying a human advisor could be compounding over time, and those management fees could creep into your returns. With Wealthfront, they only charge a 0.25% management fee, which is four times less an absolute steal. Seriously. In fact, a $15,000 investment would only cost you $3.18 a month in management fees on Wealthfront. You get the support you need and super smart software helping you to select the right investments, take advantage of tax loss harvesting, automatic portfolio rebalancing, and more. The story I hear over and over again is, Charlie, I've been making good money but never actually invested because it was hard to set up and I forgot to do it. A surefire way to ensure that you do invest is through Wealthfront since it's so simple to use and you can set up recurring deposits so that you are dollar cost averaging into the market. Smart as Warren Buffett would say. Anyways, the cherry on top is that they are giving you $20 just for opening and funding your first taxable investment account when you use my link. That's an extra $20 to get you started building wealth. And yeah, the link will be down in the description below. And now back to the video. All right, third up on our list is AT&T, stock ticker T. They're an American telecommunications company that also happens to be one of the largest telecommunications companies in the world. Right now, one share of AT&T is trading at $18.86 with a 52-week low of $16.63 and a 52-week high of $25.59. Looking at their one-year price chart, we can see that the price of AT&T has you know, really gone down in the last year. We started above $21 per share one year ago. It rose up to over $24 a share, then really dropped back down to the lows of about $16 a share. And since then, it's hovered between $16 to $21 a share. They have a market cap of $135.019 billion, an undervalued PE ratio of 6.82, earnings per share of $2.76, and they pay a very big dividend of 5.72%. They have a five-year expected peg ratio of 2.6 and a price-to-book ratio of 0.83. The profit margin sits at 11.89% and they have a return on equity of 11.83%. This is on revenues in the last 12 months of $168.86 billion. And looking at their balance sheet, we can see that they have total cash of $21.21 billion and a current ratio of 0.7. Unfortunately, this means that they have more current liabilities than current assets. Analysts are rating them a 2.6, meaning it is between a buy and a hold. And the average analyst price target is $24.64, which is about 30% higher than the current price of $18.86. So AT&T recently announced its earnings on April 21st, where it shared that its diluted earnings per share amounted to 65 cents compared to $1.02 a year ago, and its adjusted earnings per share amounted to 77 cents compared to 85 cents a year ago. These numbers definitely aren't ideal, but in the same financial report, AT&T CEO John Sankey actually mentioned lots of success with the company's postpaid phone net ads, as well as fiber broadband net ads. I think it's important to note that the telecom company 
brought on Sankey as its CEO just two years ago. And so these past few years have been much more of a transition period for the company rather than doing regular business. Now, one of the biggest changes that the company wants with Sankey in charge is to reduce focus on the entertainment empire that AT&T has spent billions to build. Instead, the company wants to place more of its time and resources on its 5G incorporation, which is easily one of the most exciting prospects of its business. This is why in the past month of April alone, AT&T has reported critical news updates regarding the end of its Warner Media business. More specifically, the telecom business reported that it closed the transaction to merge Warner Media with Discovery, therefore receiving $40.4 billion in cash and ultimately eliminating much of the debt that Warner Media carried with it when it was still integrated into AT&T's network of assets. And something that usually makes me bullish about a company is its pool of assets. And based on the AT&T's dividend yield, it definitely seems to have plenty of cash to give back to its shareholders. Like we talked about, they pay a substantial annual dividend of $1.11 per share, which amounts to about 5.82% yield. So even if the company may have quarters with slower earnings, the fact that it can still return cash to its investors shows that AT&T is still a solid, durable company that has enough liquidity to pay off shareholders. All right, next up, we're talking about Western Digital Corp, stock ticker WDC. Western Digital is an American computer hard disk drive manufacturer that is known for its design, manufacture, and sale of data tech products. Right now, one share of WDC is trading at $53.07 with a 52-week low of $43.85 and a 52-week high of $78.19. Here's the one-year price chart. You can see that one year ago, they were trading between $65 to about $75 a share. And starting in June of 2021, we did see a pretty big decline where it's remained since. They have a market cap of $16.607 billion, a P ratio of 8.36, and earnings per share of $6.35. They have a five-year expected peg ratio of 0.33, and a price to book ratio of 1.29. The profit margin sits at 10.52% and they have a good return on equity of 18.25%. In the last 12 months, they have done revenues of $18.94 billion and they're currently carrying total cash of $2.53 billion with a current ratio of 1.93. Analysts do love WDC and they are rating them as a two, meaning it is a buy right now. So as you guys have probably noticed, the end of April is an earnings heavy time of the year for many different companies. And Western Digital Corp is no exception. The tech company recently announced its earnings for the fiscal third year of 2022, and it definitely had some good things to reveal with its shareholders. More specifically, WDC experienced a 6% year-over-year increase in its revenue to a grand total of $4.38 billion and a 25% increase in its cloud revenue. For the most part, WDC top analyst estimates, which is very often a bullish sign for a company's future growth. To add on to that, Western Digital is also showcasing the strength of its business connections and partnerships. More specifically, the company announced its collaborative investment with flash memory and SSD manufacturer Kyosha not sure if I'm saying that right, into a new manufacturing facility in Japan. This collaboration marks yet another critical achievement in the strategic joint venture partnership between the two companies, which has lasted two decades. And this investment also shows that Western Digital Corp is also durable enough to have enough assets to invest in new properties and assets. And this isn't the only far-reaching collaboration that Western Digital has engaged in. Recently, WDC has also initiated a partnership with Samsung to reinforce the adoption of next-generation data play as well as processing and fabric storage technologies. The creation and adoption of these new technologies will allow businesses to have better storage solutions for their data, maximizing the potential for customer adoption. Ultimately, WDC has stuck around for a long time and it continues to score bullish points with its strong financial performance as well as its vital partnerships with other businesses. Because of these reasons, I think that WDC is definitely a stock worth watching for a long time. Cool, so the next stock on our list is McDonald's stock ticker MCD. You guys all know McDonald's. They are an American multinational fast food chain and restaurant. They're one of the biggest and most successful food and real estate brands in the world. So right now, one share of MCD is trading at $249.16 with a 52-week low of $217.68 and a 52-week high of $271.15. Here's the one-year price chart. You can see that one year ago, they were trading at around $210 a share, rose gradually in price to the one-year high, saw a pretty big correction 
as well as a recent recovery. They have a market cap of $184.28 billion, a P ratio of 24.82, earnings per share of $10.04, and they pay a small dividend of 2.17%. They have a five-year expected peg ratio of 3.22 and a profit margin of 32.49%. Looking at their income statement, we can see that their revenues for the last 12 months have been $23.22 billion, and their balance sheet shows that they have total cash of $4.71 billion and a current ratio of 1.78. Analysts are rating McDonald's as a 2.1, meaning it is a buy, and the average analyst price target is $280.79, which is over 10% higher than the current price of $249.16. So McDonald's was yet another company with a stellar earnings report this season, as they announced that their global comparable sales increased nearly 12%, their digital sales exceeded $5 billion, and their same store sales in the US increased by 3.5%. These numbers were certainly boosted by price hikes in the United States, but nonetheless, their earnings report really topped Wall Street estimates. One thing that I think is extremely impressive about the fast food chain is that they still remain largely profitable despite the Russia-Ukraine war, which is crazy because that is basically costing McDonald's well over $100 million in quarterly earnings. To me, this just really shows how insanely durable and solid McDonald's is. And honestly, we shouldn't be surprised because we all know McDonald's and we all know how famous and timeless it is. In fact, they are so solid that companies partnering up with them will benefit greatly in the stock market. Beyond Meat Stock, for example, jumped in value on the hopes that its partnership with McDonald's would be permanent. Another refreshing announcement is the fact that McDonald's is still conscious and proactive with updating and refining its menu for its customers. More specifically, their stores in Japan recently added three new dessert items to its menu, including the McShake made of green tea, the new mochi pie, and the soft serve ice cream topped with banana custard and almonds. McDonald's is special because it's separate locations across the globe catered to its own customer base. And so what you have is a constantly new and refreshing blend of menu items that make McDonald's one of the most exciting places in the world to get food. Well, not fully, but you guys know what I mean. McDonald's has stuck around for so long without slowing down, and I honestly don't think it will slow down anytime soon. That's why I think they should be a stock that is on your watch list for this month. Number six on our list is Raytheon Technologies Corp. Stock ticker RTX. Raytheon is an American aerospace and defense conglomerate and one of the largest aerospace and intelligence and defense providers in the world. Right now, one share is trading at $94.91 with a 52-week low of $79 and a 52-week high of $106.02. Looking at the price chart, this is one of the stocks that is actually against the grain. They have actually gone up in price over the last year and they have a current market cap of $141.152 billion, a P ratio of 37.1, earnings per share of $2.56, and they pay a small dividend of 2.24%. They have a five-year expected peg ratio of 1.72 and a price-to-book ratio of 2.02. Their current profit margin is at 6%, and they have a return on equity of 5.58%. Their revenue in the last 12 months is $64.39 billion, and right now they have total cash of $7.83 billion with a current ratio of 1.19. Analysts are rating Raytheon as a 1.2, meaning it is a buy, and and the average analyst price target is $114.76, which is about 20% higher than the current price of $94.91. So Raytheon recently released earnings on April 26th, where it reported total net sales of $15.7 billion, which is a 3% year-over-year increase. The company also reported year-over-year -year growth in net income, relative stability in its assets and shareholder equity, and an overall decrease in total liabilities. So to summarize, Raytheon definitely had a very good fiscal quarter, which is something to consider when discussing how the aerospace conglomerate is faring through current events. It shouldn't be a surprise that Raytheon has been affected by the Russia-Ukraine war. More specifically, CEO Greg Hayes said that the company would not be able to boost production of Stinger missiles until 2023 due to a scarcity of materials for weapons that Western allies have rushed to Ukraine. In fact, the company reduced the sales forecast for the year by $750 million dollars mostly due to pulling its commercial aviation business out of Russia because of the crisis. So it wouldn't be surprising to expect short-term hits to Raytheon's sales and profitability. However, Raytheon expects a boost in its sales as pro-Ukraine Western countries replenish their missile supplies, meaning more customers for Raytheon. I believe this makes Raytheon a solid long-term play as it faces a short-term hit to its value that acts as a discount for an almost inevitable rise in price down the line. Raytheon's defense sector will also play 
a critical role in consolidating and benefiting the company's venture into the commercial aerospace business. The goal is to return to pre-pandemic levels of activity and profitability. And yeah, as the pandemic slowly tapers off, we can definitely expect to see an increased amount of air travel. Long-term shareholders can expect a way to allow Raytheon's assets to accumulate so that it can refocus its resources and attention to areas of business outside of defense. Overall, a pretty solid stock that I think you guys should check out for the month of May 2022. All right, last on our list is the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund ETF, stock ticker VTI. VTI is an exchange trade fund that tracks the performance of the CRSP US Total Market Index. So it's not one company, rather it's an ETF that has a bunch of companies within it. Right now, one share of VTI is trading at $206.88 with a 52-week low of $206.71 and a 52-week high of $244.06. Yeah, looking at the one-year price chart, we can see that we are very close to the one-year low. The past year was really, really great for VTI all the way up until the beginning of 2020, where we saw some pretty big corrections. The total net assets in this fund is $1.31 trillion, with an average yield of 1.26%. You can see that the year-to-date daily total return is negative 13.04%, and they have an ultra-low expense ratio of 0.03%. They're categorized as a large blend fund, with an average PE ratio of 20 5.59 and an average price to book ratio of 4.18. Looking at the sector weightings, we can see that we are heavy in consumer cyclical at over 11%, financial services at over 13%, healthcare at over 13%, and of course, technology at 25.05%. The top 10 holdings in this fund include Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Alphabet, Tesla, Berkshire Hathaway, Nvidia, and JP Morgan Chase. The one year daily total return is negative 2.71%, and the three year daily total return is 13.48%. If we take a look at the annual total return percent history, you can see that most years we are in the green. However, we did have some red years in 2018, 2008, and 2002. Because VTI places a greater emphasis on broadening its portfolio to small and mid cap stocks, the volatility of this ETF will likely be greater than some other ETFs that focus on large cap or blue chip stocks. More specifically, the ETF incorporates around 4,000 other companies, many of them in particular being smaller businesses with more volatile price movements. So one thing I definitely value about VTI is the fact that it adopts this mindset of buying as much of the market as possible rather than cherry picking specific gems in the market. This mentality of buying the entire haystack instead of just finding the needles in the haystack enables investors to actually gain greater exposure to the market and so VTI could be the right investment for those investors who want to profit off as much of the market as possible. And I'm bullish about the US stock market as a whole because public sentiment has definitely driven down market values by a significant amount. The biggest concern that consumers have is the increase in interest rates and this negative sentiment has made many wary or skeptical about investing in big tech companies or growth stocks. The war also has definitely put a damper on global businesses and has been detrimental to the value of many stocks. I do think that the market will bounce back at some point, And I think that what's happening right now is that a lot of valuable companies are selling at a discount. And there is a lot of safety and potential in the ETF that spreads exposure to thousands of companies in the market. I really do think that VTI is a solid pick for the long run and current events have opened up a rare opportunity to invest while it's low. So if you want a safer and probably more passive investment, VTI is definitely a good choice for you. Anyways, those are my top stocks for the month of May 2022. If you guys do want some free stocks or some crypto, I will put links down below. And of course, if you want to get your free $20 from Wealthfront, that link will be down below as well. Happy trading. And if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to share it with a friend and also like and subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this. I make a ton of content about personal finance, investing, and entrepreneurship. That's it for this video. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.